If you don't mind, please turn with me to Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1, verse 40 to 42. The gospel according to Mark chapter 1, verse 40 to 42. And the word of God says, Now a leper came to him, imploring him, kneeling down to him, and saying to him, If you are willing, you can make me clean. Then Jesus moved with the compassion, stretched out his hand, and touched him, and said to him, I am willing, be cleansed. As soon as he had spoken, Immediately the leprosy left him and he was cleansed. May God bless his holy word. Brothers and sisters in Christ, our sermon today is titled Cleansing of a COVID Sick World. Cleansing of a COVID Sick World. Ladies and gentlemen, for the last two years, the world has been sick from COVID 19. We have been uh, Suffering. People had been dying. People have been wondering what's going on. My friend, several weeks ago, as I studied the scriptures, I spoke or asked questions, different people of all walks of life, what the past two years had been to them, and what they may say about COVID-19. The words you are about to hear are not my words. These are words from those people that I have asked the question, what do they think about COVID-19? Yeah, their words. The first two people said, COVID is evil. The next person said, COVID stinks. And then I met this couple that we are so, so talkative and they said, COVID sucks. COVID is a beast. COVID is a monster. So all and the list goes on and on and on because I spoke with different people of all walks of life. And ladies and gentlemen, as I received all those responses from people, as I studied and taught the book of Mark, as I know I teach New Testament at Carolina College of Biblical Studies, I asked this, I asked my students, what do you think Mark teaches? What can we find in Mark that is very unique to us as we experience today's suffering through COVID-19? You know, my friends, the book of Mark, or the gospel according to Mark, involves the dual focus of Christ's life, service, and the sacrifice. And my friends, when you study deep, you find out that in Jesus' the preaching and the teaching of this word and the healing the people in different neighborhoods, big and small cities, Jesus Christ ministered to the needs of those people to the point of death. And ladies and gentlemen, Jesus met so many sick people in the neighborhoods. And he performed miracles. He, 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 he held them, ladies and gentlemen. And people started trusting in him. We as today's society, all Christians, we believe in the power of healing. You know, my friends, as you all know, Christ was crucified. So after the resurrection, Jesus commissioned his disciples and all of us as Bible-believing people to proclaim the power of the gospel, the power of healing in Jesus' name. Now, as we tackle the issue of cleansing, here was a man who was sick of leprosy. So, making some observations here in verse 40, now a leper came to him, imploring him, kneeling down to him, and saying to him, if you are willing, you can me, make me clean. Ladies and gentlemen, the scripture tells us that the sick leper knew that he was sick. And he made you know, his own personal decision. He did not make a decision to go visit a neighbor. He did not make a decision to go to a shopping mall somewhere. But he, he made his personal decision to go to Jesus. 
There is some big difference, my friends, in, in, in his discipline. He went to Jesus to seek healing. That is the personal decision making of a sick leper man. You know, my friends, we make personal decisions. We make personal decisions as we perceive things different. In today's society, we need to think of Christ Jesus and turn to him for some healing. People are suffering, yes. People are coming up with their own ideologies of what is happening, ladies and gentlemen. We all have opinions, different opinions. We respect each other's opinions. But ladies and gentlemen, when it comes to the word of God, my opinion and your opinion don't count. God's word takes the spotlight, ladies and gentlemen. Because what it says it stands. The sick lover went to Jesus. He was seeking. He nailed it down to him. Saying to him, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Ladies and gentlemen, it is the time for the Bible-believing Christians to get up individually and go to Jesus. Seeking and kneeling down, seeking for healing in Jesus' name. You see, as the church goes, so goes the nation. As the Christian goes, so goes the world. So Christians, Christians, we had been sick for far too long. But we have gone everywhere. Probably you have gone everywhere seeking for some healing. But we forgot something very important. Let us be like this sick lover man. Let us kneel down individually and go to Jesus seeking for healing. That's when the healing begins, ladies and gentlemen. No one else can provide what we need in the sufferings that we are going through. Only it begins from Jesus Christ because he is the greatest doctor who ever lived. I'm not undermining the power of science and this and that. By the way, by the way, I am fully vaccinated and boosted. I want to lead by example. But I cannot just say the science healed me. I can say Jesus the first healed me. The sick labor went to Jesus. I want the Christian myself beginning with himself. Go to Jesus first. Lord, I am sick. I need healing in your name. I am here. Seeking your touch. The sick lever man went to Jesus. Seeking for healing. I'm praying for the people that surely told me all those answers. COVID stinks. COVID sucks. COVID is a beast. COVID is evil. I'm praying for them and I've been praying for them that surely, surely, he will turn to Jesus and know that Jesus can make things whole again. You and I as walking Christians in the 21st century, we know what it means to walk by faith, not by fear, and neither by sight. The Bible-believing people, we know what God can do. We should never doubt God. We should trust that he has the power to heal us. And as the world beats us with all these different sufferings, we need to turn to him first. Can you imagine if every Bible Christian today, now, after the past two years, if we all decide each individual person to go to Jesus, imploring and seeking for healing from COVID, how this will work? Maybe this thing will be gone like this, like a twinkling of an eye. Because Christians are praying, rebuking the power of the devil. You know, my friends, leprosy was used in biblical times to refer to a wide variety of serious skin diseases. Leprosy was used in the biblical times 
to revert to a wide variety of serious skin diseases. Probably smallpox. Probably chickenpox. Probably uh, some skin rash. All kind of skin diseases. But all that was revert was leprosy. And friends, I believe if each one of us in a singular form, if each one of us would stand and decide to go to Jesus for encouragement, for strength, for guidance, for healing, for provision, God will give you the answer. Because you are doing these things because you trust in him. You are not doubting what God can do. And in fact, you are leaning on him to do it in his name. The problem is, we are kind of doubting whether he can provide healing. When we study the scriptures, we find out that Christ healed so many people who were suffering from different diseases. Do you think he lost the power to heal? I don't think so. Do you think he has no power to help us? I believe he does. He never lost that power. He is God. You know, at the time, the Mosaic law, the Mosaic law had specific requirements for a person with a skin in disease. Well, you may be seated there and ask, what? Are you telling us that the Mosaic law had a specific requirements for a person with a skin disease? Someone with a leprosy? What does that have to do with my life? Well, the scripture speaks for itself, my friends. If you don't mind, turn with me to Leviticus chapter 13. Leviticus chapter 13. You know, I want us to walk through this so that we can see these times. We can see the history of things happening here on earth. And how God really intervened and worked it out for the people at the time. Leviticus chapter 13, verse 45 and 46. Here is the word of God. Leviticus 13, verse 45 and 46 says, Now the leper on whom the soul is, his clothes shall be torn, and his head bare, and he shall cover his mustache, and cry, Unclean, unclean. He shall be unclean. All the days he has the soul, he shall be unclean. He is unclean, and he shall dwell alone. Alone. His dwelling shall be outside the camp. And the Mosaic law, my friends, that was the specific requirement. The Mosaic law had a specific requirement for a person with a skin disease. Someone with a leprosy, he was to isolate. Do you see similarity here? When you are COVID, you isolate. You see here, and you will go saying, I'm unclean. I'm unclean. Don't come closer to me. I have leprosy. My friends, today we need to lean on God for healing, ladies and gentlemen. The scripture is telling us that diseases existed before. That's why they are written here, ladies and gentlemen. How were they, how, how were they gone? How were they taken care of? Jesus Christ is the greatest doctor who ever lived. And before we allow diseases to paralyze our faith, ladies and gentlemen, we need to turn to God for healing each individual person. We claim we are Christians. I'm a Christian. Yes, we are. You make your only personal decision to give your life to Jesus Christ. He becomes your Lord and Savior. So you cry to him, Lord, I know healing comes from you. 
Before I go to my doctor, God, I am reporting to you. I am pleading with you, God. I need healing. Then in God, I have my personal doctor that I will go visit because doctors heal in the name of Jesus. The healing don't come from the medicine. The healing comes from God. But God gives us doctors to practice medicine to help us here on earth. In other words, my friends, we need to think outside the box. The reason we see some Bible-believing people being paralyzed in their faith is because their faith is weak. Because the world has deceived them. You know, you know, the leper person, the person with leprosy, kept in distance from human beings at the time. You know, but this man, he made his own personal decision, you know. He knew if he broke the, 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 the Mosaic law, he was to be punished. So he knew he cannot do that. He cannot go closer to people. But here is a specific healer. Here is the King Jesus, the Savior. The man made a decision and drew himself closer to him, to Jesus. He fell down on his knees to make his plea for healing. Think about that. A personal decision. If this leper made a decision to go closer to people because the Mosaic law, I just read it for you, Leviticus 13, 25, 46. If he made a decision to go close to people, he could have been severely punished. That was the law of the land at the time, my friends. Well, I want us to follow the law, ladies and gentlemen. When we are taught six feet, let's go six feet. That's the best way to do it, ladies and gentlemen, because as Christians, we got to lead by example. Look here. This man made his only personal decision to go closer to Jesus, went on his knees to make his plea for healing. That's what we need, ladies and gentlemen. That's what we need. We need to bow to Jesus for healing. We need each individual person to go and kneel down. Yes, let us keep the six feet distance according to the law. Yeah, we want to be law-abiding citizens. But that does not dictate us how we should approach our God. We have the right to worship the living God. My friends, do you know the world is watching how Christians will respond to any challenge that comes our way in this world we live in today? I'm telling you, my friends, if the church is paralyzed to a point whereby we cannot pray, we cannot teach the truth, we cannot tell the truth, you got to know that, my friends. Now we are going down, down and down. The world is crumbling down. The church should be the one that is dynamic in everything. Why? Because we believe in God. We serve the almighty God, the creator of heaven and earth. Nothing is impossible with God. When we undermine the authority of God, ladies and gentlemen, we become weak and weak, wimpy and wimpy. And we become spiritually anemic. Oh, Pastor Nicholas, don't say that we are becoming spiritually anemic. Listen, my friends, I will say it. I love you to death. I told you many times, this is the word of God. I don't make this stuff up. This is the Bible. 
When this scripture speaks, God speaks, ladies and gentlemen. Neo the Estas, the breath of God. God is the source of his word, ladies and gentlemen. So when we manipulate it to fit in our ego, we are paralyzing ourselves. We are crippling ourselves. We need to return back to the word of God, ladies and gentlemen. We need to believe that Jesus has the power to bring healing, total healing in our lives. Jesus has the power to handle COVID. You know, the sick leper had no doubt that Jesus can heal him. He had no, he had no doubts. He made his personal decision. Neither should we doubt Jesus can heal us from COVID. Neither should we doubt Jesus can heal us from COVID, ladies and gentlemen. How long? How long are we going to continue singing and singing deep and deep? How long? We are Christians, man. God wants to use Christians to lead the world. To know that in Jesus' name there is healing. Yeah. <laughs> the sick leper only wondered whether Jesus was willing. Do you hear what the scripture says? Now a leper came to him, imploring him, kneeling down to him, and saying to him, If you are willing, you can make me clean. If you are willing. Do you think Jesus is really not willing to help us? Do you really think? Jesus is always willing to help us. Jesus is willing to help us from COVID. Only he's asking us to seek his healing. He's only asking us to go to him. Let us bow to Jesus and ask for healing in his name. But when we kick him out of everything, how do you expect us to be healed? How? Maybe some magic will come up, maybe somewhere. There is nothing that Christ Jesus cannot do. All what we need is to have faith in him. Not to doubt whether he can help us out, ladies and gentlemen. These are the times Christians are needed. God has the power to heal the sick COVID world. Yes, he does. We need to trust God to heal us from this disease. We sure do. We sure do. Yeah. You know, people people are going we go shopping. We go shopping. But some people don't want to go to church. Oh. I don't want to step on anybody's toes, my friends. It does step to me daily and to us. That was teach the word. Just because there is COVID doesn't mean that we will stop worshiping God. Just because there is COVID doesn't mean that surely we will not follow the rules. No, we will follow the rules, but still worship our God. But God has given us good minds. We got to use common sense. Right? I know if I climb this tree and then jump from it, I'll break my skinny legs. I can't do that. Mm -mm. When I was growing up in Kenya, I used to climb trees like mangoes all the way up there. It was fun that time. You know, how climb trees all the way up there. You know how, how boys are. And then we will come slow down. You know? Because we know if you, if, you, if you can jump, you will fall. You can break your leg. We know for sure 
if you don't protect yourself, you can get sick. We got to use common sense. Common sense. Let's trust God as the greatest doctor who has healed so many people since the creation. Yes, we just saw. When you, in fact, when you read chapter 14 of Leviticus, you will see a lot. You will learn a lot. So these diseases that affect people did not just come 2020. You know? Diseases had been there. But they had been handled. But I, I believe, and I believe, I, I'm sorry Christians, but I believe we are the reason the world is worried. Because you know what happens? Christians, our faith has shrunk. Our faith has shrunk. We have no faith at all now. For some reason, we have allowed the devil to mislead us. I hope we wake up before it's too late. Listen to verse 41. Then Jesus, you know, the leper has come to Christ Jesus. He has come, he bowed down before him. He pleaded with him, and now Jesus responds. Then Jesus moved with compassion, stretched out his hand, and they touched him, and they said to him, I am willing. Be cleansed. Amen. I love that. Mm. So we see here, King Jesus is filled with the love and the compassion. Jesus is filled with the love and the compassion for us today, right now. His heart is filled with the love and the compassion for the leper, the sick leper. Jesus stretched his healing hand and they touched the sick man. Whew. How many times, my friends, have we seen Jesus heal people? I just gave you a, a, an update for Sister Twitty. How God is doing through your prayers. You know, we've been interceding for her and interceding for her others. And God is showing us he gets it done his way. Jesus Christ is the greatest doctor who ever lived. Oh, yes, Lord. Those who practice medicine, they practice it here on earth, but the healing comes from Jesus. Don't take me wrong, my friends. The sick lever, Christ has stretched his hand. Mm. He told him, listen up. I am willing to cleanse you. And Jesus said with his own word, did you see the hand of that fat? Be cleansed. Be cleansed in Jesus' name. That is wonderful, my friends. The sick lever has received cleansing. He has received cleansing. He has received healing. Mm. You know, my friends, Jesus knew this repress and disease was the work of the devil. Jesus knew it. God knows COVID-19 is from the devil. God knows that. He knows that. But when we take the initiative to bow down and plead with God for healing, he will cleanse us. He will heal us. The reason this thing is just hanging around is because we have become just so hard-hearted people. We don't want to follow his instructions and we don't want to follow rules. I want to do what I want to do. I want to do it my way. Who are you to tell me to, to read the Bible? Or who are you to, who are you to tell me to, to stay six feet? Man, we have, we have become arrogant body sides, man. Oh, Pastor Nicholas, don't say that. You know what, my friends? I love you to death. I really do. Jesus knew this leprosy and disease was the work of the devil. I tell you what, COVID-19 is devil's work. 
It's the devil's work. No, Satan's work is to destroy God's people through different sufferings. That is his good work. Satan is the evil. Is the evil forces want us to suffer. But how he, he, he gets us? Because we don't belong to him. The moment you make a decision to give your life to Christ Jesus, that is the moment the devil will chase after you day and night. He's so upset with you that you, you jumped out of his wagon to follow Christ Jesus. So he wanted to teach you a lesson. He brings sufferings. God gives us the best in life. The devil destroys the best that God has given us. God has given us life. Once you make that decision, Lord, I need you in my life. Once you ask and pray that prayer and give you a life to Christ Jesus, the devil starts the chase. He starts the hate. Yeah, and then you start seeing this happening. My friends, I believe this is a wake-up call for Christians. If we don't learn from this, I don't know what will ever help us to learn, man. Mm -mm. Satan's work is to destroy God's people through different sufferings. People are suffering. It's a real thing. It is a real thing. But we got to live our lives in Christ Jesus. We got to think outside the box. We got to apply our faith in Christ Jesus. We got to lead the world to lean on God. Cleansing of a COVID sick world. Listen to verse 42 as we finish. As soon as he had spoken, that means Jesus, immediately the leprous left him and he was cleansed. Mm. He was cleansed immediately. As soon as King Jesus spoke and touched the sick leper, immediately he was healed and cleansed. Can you imagine the joy in this guy? The healed sick man jumps up, praising God, rejoicing that he was sick with the leprosy, but now he's cleansed, he's healed in Jesus' name. Who, my friends, what else do we need? How clear can it be than this? How? How? Mm. We know Jesus moved with compassion, stretched out his hand, and they touched him, and they said to him, I am willing, I'm willing to heal you. I'm willing to cleanse you. I'm willing to help you out. So as soon as Jesus had spoken, immediately the leprosy left him, and he was cleansed. You know what, Christians? I believe we need to do as this lever man did. I believe we do. Not only Christians in America, but all over the world. Because, you know, COVID is undead, is a monster, it's evil, as the people were saying, all over the world. I think those people were speaking for, for the whole world. You know? Jesus is the healing today, my friends. The scripture just confirmed as, as soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy left him and he was cleansed. Jesus is willing to help us. Jesus is willing to heal us from this COVID world. Cleansing of a COVID sick world. The world need to turn to Jesus. Each individual Christian need to bow to Christ seeking for healing so that we can send a very bold, truthful message to the world to know that, yes, healing comes from Jesus. That's what we need to do, my friends. 
So Jesus Christ boldly placed love and the combustion of a ritual and the regulations. That's what he did. He boldly, the Savior boldly placed love and the combustion of a rituals and the regulations. You know, rituals and the traditions are very misleading. <laughs> Remember my, telling you a, a story from my grandma a long time ago when I was about maybe 8, 9, 10 years old there, saying that we got to have a baobab string tied on our left wrist here. So that, you know, a baobab tree, that huge tree, so that when the monsoon wind will come, because there was, oh, there was, there will be this big, this powerful wind coming through. So, grandma said, you know, you got to have a string, baobab string tied on your wrist, on your left hand, so that when the, when the wind comes, it will not blow you away. <laughs> that was in grandma's lie, misleading information. Can you imagine? What will this do? That is their opinion, my friends. Didn't work. Didn't work. Mm -mm. Those are traditions. Those are rituals and the traditions of my grandma. My grandma went to heaven. She, she was a Christian before she went home two years ago. But look, my friends. Jesus Christ boldly placed love and the compassion over rituals and the regulations because rituals and traditions are misleading. What did he do? Jesus sent the healed man to go to the heavenly authorities. Send them now. There is more sake law. I want you to go now. Just go to be cleared. To be cleared as a healed man. And that will work as a testimony. It's a testimony of God's power of evil. Oh, yeah. Jesus was not bragging. You see, I did it, I did it, I did it. No. He's a humble servant. He sent the healed man to go to report to the authorities that I am healed. Check me up. Clear me out now so that I can go back to the people. So Jesus told him, just go. Let the authorities know that you are healed. Let them clear you. Let them put you in those machines and come up with whatever system they were using at the time. Clear you off. It's a testimony of God's power over evil. The devil shows his evilness in this world we live in. But God proves through his word his power. My friends, believing in God is everything we need. My prayer is that as from today onwards, Christians, we will lean on God. We pray for our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ all over the world. Each individual to go before God, kneeling and bowing to him, imploring and seeking healing from COVID. In Jesus' name. And let the healing begin. And God will continue being glorified, ladies and gentlemen. People will get back to church. People will start serving God, worshiping him. You know, people are still perishing in the sin. We need missionaries in the mission field. By the way, they have already gone back. What a faith, man. They are gone. Yes, they are gone. We pray for them. We support them. Woo, over 5,000 of our missionaries are overseas. Telling the story of Jesus Christ. The power of healing. Proclaiming the cleansing of a COVID sick world. Through Jesus Christ. That's what we need to do ladies and gentlemen. I don't know what is in your heart today. I really don't. I don't know.